do you believe that with uh, what we've seen from Three Eye Atlas that there is a chance that life form is on it, whether it's a, whether the life form is dead or alive? Yeah, it's possible. Uh, it's possible that life was delivered to the solar system from outside. Uh, we just don't know, you know. And scientists are very good at pretending uh, to be the adults in the room, saying, right. you know, that's what we think. And but, but the point is, you know, nature is much more imaginative than we are. And the best way to learn is to observe and 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 study whatever nature delivers to our backyard. And and the thing about uh, a visitor from outside the solar system or that comes to our backyard is. You know, that it's a new risk that nobody considered before. It could be a black swan event where the chance that it's technological is very small, but the implications would be huge for the future of humanity. Oh, yeah. So we must consider that possibility and because, you know, a visitor in your backyard can enter through the front door. Uh, or, you know, and, and we need to think about it. In the past, you know, Congress uh, tasked NASA to find all the space rocks that may hit the Earth that are bigger than a football field. Uh, but they never thought about the possibility of alien technology. This is something that nobody discussed. And I'm just saying, let's keep that uh, as a possibility. We have to consider that and collect as much data as possible to educate ourselves. We just don't know how much traffic there is of technological gadgets coming into the inner solar system. And why is it, do you think, that other scientists are so reluctant to admit the possibility that this is alien tech or that there's alien tech out there? I mean, it's a massive universe, and certainly there's life in it other than us. So, I mean, it could be, right? Uh, Why are they so reluctant to admit that? Well, I think... uh... Uh, first, they are, they are quite arrogant uh, in thinking that uh, there is nothing as uh, as, uh, as uh, intelligent as we are, you know, that, and mm-hmm. that includes uh, uh, not only scientists, but other people, um, oh. technologists. And, and I, I think it's arrogant to believe that because most of the stars, you know, uh, formed before the sun by billions of years. And uh, and there are 100 billion stars. So just thinking that we are the smartest in the class of intelligent civilization is really arrogant, makes no sense. And to me, it sounds very reasonable that there, there were lots of things like us uh, mm-hmm. around other stars that predated us. Many of them died by now, you know, just like all the people that used to be on Earth that are dead by now. And and for us to, to know about them uh, would, you know, it, it requires uh, space archaeology, looking for the relics, uh, everything they sent out, uh, the, like Voyager that we launched. Yeah. And I think it's, it makes a lot of sense. The public thinks it makes a lot of sense. It's mm-hmm. just that uh, aca- people in academia, uh, the mainstream of astronomy, appear to uh, resist that. And I think it's a It's a bad mistake because, um, you know, first of all, the public uh, funds science, so we should reflect the interests of the public when we do science. But uh, moreover, it's an amazing opportunity to learn something new, and it will change the future of humanity. Uh, If we find, you know, new insights into technology, into science, by uh, uh, trying to imitate uh, other civilizations that were more accomplished than we are, and, and, you know, one way to find them is not by waiting for a phone call like we did for 60 years, waiting for a radio signal. Right. Instead, let's just check our backyard and see if there was any, anything mm. there that came from a neighbor's yard. Do we know what the, what the does anyone uh, hypothesize what the wow signal was? Was it a call for help? Was it a reach out saying, hey, just checking in, how is everything going? <laughs> Do we have any idea at all what it meant? Um, no, I mean, we don't know the content, the information content. Why was it sent? What was encoded? If there was anything, uh, it was a one-time no. radio signal. And um, yeah, so uh, in principle, it could be a communication signal. Uh, and, and, and indeed, uh, as you say, you know, it's quite clear that there were probably tragedies in the past billions of yeah. years in the Milky Way mm-hmm. galaxy where some civilizations uh, you know, either inflicted the catastrophes on themselves the way we are, uh, you know, <laughs> doing every now and then, uh, mm-hmm. or, you know, their star exploded or something and they cried for help. We were not around right. to listen to that, uh, uh, but uh, it's possible that every now and then you have a cry for help coming from outer space. Mm. So what do you, 
What do you make of uh, the l- latest reports about the evidence that there was, um, I guess, bacteria on Mars that was alive at some point? Do you do you, do you think that um, we're going to find that there's an uh, like uh, ocean under the surface of actual yeah. water? Is that going to happen on yeah. Mars? Well, uh, so Mars was very similar to Earth in the first uh, two billion years, half of mm-hmm. its uh, life, the first <clears throat> half of its life. It had uh, definitely uh, lakes, rivers, uh, oceans of water on the surface because there was an atmosphere. In fact, Mars was suitable for life before Earth because it's a smaller body that cooled earlier than Earth and life could have flourished there before it happened on Earth. In fact, it may have been transferred through rocks to, from Mars to Earth. We might all be mm. Martians. When Elon Musk <laughs> says, let's go to Mars, you know, there, were, mm. there might have been tiny astronauts uh, inside rocks. Uh, these are microbes <laughs> that migrated from Mars to Earth uh, billions of years ago. And um, so finding microbes on Mars would not be surprising at all if the, the evidence of that. The evidence is not conclusive because we need to bring the materials to Earth in order to examine them in laboratories and check the isotopes and make sure that what we see was not a result of geological activity, but actually microbes produced that. And, but, or, you know, in, in the big scheme of things, uh, I'm not, uh, I mean, I don't find microbes uh, so exciting uh, <laughs> I don't because, uh, because uh, we, we, can't, we can't learn from them. You see, if there is something more intelligent yeah. than us, we can grow and be better. Yeah, uh, And uh, just uh, investing all resources in searching for microbes the way my colleagues are doing, you know, they're obsessed with looking for microbes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I find that uh, a little depressing because <laughs> I want to, to know if, if there is a resident uh, near any of these uh, yes. houses on the cosmic street, you know, and, and um, that would be inspiring because if you see something more advanced than you are. Uh, you know, yeah. because they had technology or science for more than a, a century, the way we had, uh, then you can learn from that. Mm-hmm. It will be inspiring. It, it will change our focus away from conflicts on Earth, you know, all these uh, disputes that we have on Earth that are really quite narrow-minded, you know, because we look down on each mm-hmm. other on Earth. Uh, if we find someone else that uh, was far more accomplished than we are, I think it will, we might start to think bigger and, and uh, explore space and cooperate, and it will change humanity in a very good way.